We are ready to crush them, Herr General. Prometheus's information is amazingly accurate. The original ideas from uh, from Ruse came from the development studio Eugen Systems, and they came up with uh, this creative vision of being a general. And then they had some of the ideas, which use World War II as a setting for uh, lots of reasons. The first one is that you have huge uh, battles with uh, impressive battlefields. Everyone knows about them, so it's very easy to get into it. All the unit types you find in a World War II game also are um, easy to understand. You know what a tank or airplane, what it's good for. The story had to wait for the level design of the game to be uh, very advanced. And then we started writing the story with uh, Jeff, our writer. I was brought onto the project actually after it had been running for even two or three years. Um, what happened was they, uh, they were coming towards the end of development, they needed a scriptwriter to come in and finish up what they'd been working on. So the objective initially for the, the story of the game was to make something which was tightly integrated with the gameplay and which would serve the, the purpose of um, teaching how to use the game, how to discover the different gameplay features. First we had to divide the game into missions what were the, the major events you would have, and then how to connect that with the pitch. So we create the, the baseline of the idea. And also making sure that uh, the story wasn't sort of imposed on the player. The player would do something and that would trigger a story element. So that the player feels like they're more acting in the story than just sort of having it shoved down their throat. I beg your pardon, sir. Do you really trust those reports? I mean, Admiral Canaris himself has concerns about uh, Prometheus. His reports are more reliable than those from Berlin. What really makes the game unique uh, is this idea of bringing real elements of chess and poker into the gameplay. You're setting up a strategy here and trying to hide it, yeah, and while you're sending a fake attack over here. And in the meantime, you're trying to figure out what his troops are doing where and what he's building while you're trying to hide what you're doing. There's a spy infiltrating the generals, giving false information, and, uh, and this is the whole story is about finding this spy. So you have this whole storyline that gets very involved where the player is actually involved in what's happening in the battle because when a deception or a ruse occurs on the battlefield, the player feels that uh, and he has to immediately react to it and that becomes part of the storyline. And then we created characters to uh, evolve in this story, which was their personality. And then finally we, we came up with a, a breakdown of what needed to be done in terms of cutscene. Well, if that's all... No, wait. Sheridan. We've received special orders from Berlin. What kind of special orders? You see really more and more a convergence between video games and movies. Actually, we worked with a, a team of directors uh, who created um, a storyboard. They handled the cutscene much like a, a movie, actually. And what they did is they brought a very cinematic eye to the cutscenes, cut the idea of, of different camera movements and how you frame the shot. When we started to think about the technical solution for creating the cutscenes, uh, what we realized was that we wanted to make a game about generals facing each other, perception, deception, and for that the best solution seems to be uh, facial and body mocap. And then they got this great company called Salad Anim, who does the, um, all the motion capture. So we get involved with this project uh, because uh, we are, um, a company works on two uh, two kinds of, um, of markets, video game and movie. The big challenge was for us to capture the expression of the characters and the body at the same time and to, to match all these things together to be first realistic and to keep all the intentions of all actors. Well, we had rehearsal sessions first. So we came in and, and just to block, so, you know, so we would save time later. So we'd all come in and uh, and go through scene by scene by scene by scene and okay, what makes sense here? And then you had the, the directors as well, the, the mocap session. You know, you had directors that were, they're watching your level of, of acting and then you had the directors, you know, more on a technical level as well. If an actor reads a line, um, there's all sorts of gestures that might go with it. It's like, take these, they gotta go to headquarters. The line may say one thing, but then you see in the gestures and in the facial movements what they're really thinking. In a cutscene, typically it's animated, you don't get that. What you, you do get that in film, and you can actually get it with mocap, because you're mocapping the face as well as the body. And then we came in and we shot the body mocap. So we come in and uh, everybody gets their suits on, and then we have a gentleman who comes in and puts all the markers on, and then we do a test, do a little gymnastics test for the computer, I think, to, to make sure that everything's in sync. We want to have a really precise animation for body, so we set up the camera 
essentially to get a pretty small detail of each animation. Wearing the mocap suit. It's not always the most flattering piece of material. Yeah, imagine walking around in a scuba suit all day. After that, we use the same system to capture the facial and the voice together. Facial mocap uh, had, had done that once before. And uh, yeah, I think they, they put a series of maybe 40 markers on your face. Sometimes even salt, small motions in the face or close-up shots can tell you much more than uh, five lines of text. We built a special uh, glasses with HD camera on the, f on, on the front. This camera can capture the pupils' animations just to have uh, more emotionals for each animation. I think it's really impressive what I, as a writer and a storyteller, can do in a game now. When you can get a couple of guys in a conference room to act out a scene, and then suddenly you can add the North African desert and the burning tanks and planes going overhead. These special effects, it's not only George Lucas that can do that. You know, now we can do that in our, in our little game studio in Ubisoft. And that's a huge difference, I think. I think as, as the technology becomes more and more accessible, you're going to see a lot more games doing a lot better, more immersive storytelling using this kind of technology.